We're going to do a quick fire round of questions from our audience and to kick it off here's Sabrina Woodward. What's your question? Hey guys, is the vaccine likely to be a once off that fixes everything or with all the different mutations and variants? Do you see it becoming something like the flu vax where you have to get a new one every year? Sharon Lewin. We don't know the answer to that now, but I would predict that we will likely have to have repeat vaccinations and they may change each year, but it may not be forever. And that's because of new strains? It's because of new strains. We actually don't know how long the immunity will last for. We know that we get really good immunity from the vaccines, both AstraZeneca and Pfizer. You make antibodies and you can measure them. They don't decay over two months. We don't know if they last for six or 12 months and if you need a booster dose. We'll okay. learn that. We'll know that answer to that soon. Um, OK, also for you, Sharon, this is from Tess Wilson in Lightview, South Australia. The rollout might can coincide with when we normally get the flu vax. Can I get them at the same time? How do the two vaccines interact? Yeah, the recommendation is not to get them at the same time. That's largely because we just don't know enough about the two of them together and to separate the flu vaccine and the COVID vaccine by two weeks. And that recommendation comes from how some of the big studies were designed. OK, Nick, this is for you from HIAB in South Yarra. Will access to different types of vaccines be up to the patient or will there be a you get what's available system? Basically, can you choose AstraZeneca or Pfizer? Well, at the moment, there's only one approved and it's going to be rolled out and that's, that's Pfizer. That um, longer term. When, when AstraZeneca comes online, it will really depend. It's, it's more where you are in the queue um, rather than, and then what vaccine is there on the day. Um, of course, you have the option of saying, I don't want that vaccine, but that, doesn't, that will not likely mean someone's going to go out the back and get the other one and give, give that to you. Okay. In the short term... In, in the longer term, and we're talking towards the end of this year into 2022, there will be a variety of vaccines. Uh, from Eric Jeffries, also for you from Queensland, uh, what's the time between getting your jab and when immunity kicks in? Well, that's got to vary from person to person, but the most important thing at the moment with the Pfizer and the AstraZeneca vaccine is you absolutely get the second dose um, when you need it to because it's the second dose that really gets you to the antibody levels uh, that you need for protection. OK, and Michelle Anandaraja from Margaret Bain in Macclesfield, Victoria. She says, my cousin in England had problems after her COVID injection, a swollen tongue, muscle pains and off balance. Might we have reactions to the injection, injection in Australia too? Yeah, so that's referring to um, anaphylaxis, which has been de described with the Pfizer vaccine. So um, just to put things into perspective, the incidence is really low still. It's 11 per million doses. And essentially, um, again, they've dispensed um, 1.9 million. There was a report that was put out. 20 people got anaphylaxis. 17 of those people actually had a history of allergy. So you're more likely to get anaphylaxis if you have a history of some type of allergy. The important thing here is um, that they were all fine in the end. They had to hang around for about 15 minutes. Most of these things happen in 15 minutes. They're given adrenaline and they're fine. So um, that's, this is not a reason to avoid having the vaccine. The important thing is to just check the ingredient list and make sure you're not allergic to any of those components. Nick, can we just be clear with, with our audience tonight? What are the side effects of the vaccines that we'll be getting in Australia? Well, the side effects are, are very similar to some existing vaccines that we've got. The most common one is fatigue the day after, but you can also get pain at the injection site. Uh, you can get People have reported dizziness, people have reported fever, uh, and people have reported just not feeling themselves. And, and most of the time, that's about one in 10. Uh, and all of those symptoms have been controlled in the major studies with paracetamol, and they resolve in 24 to 48 hours.